So I'm James Cooper. I'm a principal software developer at Siemens EDA Saskatoon. As a software developer, um, I mean, I write software for computers. Principal is kind of a, a level above a senior, so uh, I've been working in the field for about 15 years. I work largely kind of on my own on brand new projects, maybe leading up a small team of people. Started out early not knowing a lot about programming, not being able to take on large tasks, so primarily working on small tickets, small bug fixes and that kind of stuff. Usually small problems with a very well-defined uh, solution or, or task that needs to be performed and you know somebody's just got to sit down and do it. But over time, over the years, as I got more proficient and more experienced, uh, I was able to start taking on larger challenges, more open-ended questions, uh, to the point where now, 15 years later, it's like, here's an entire industry, here's uh, some open problem in the industry, we think we could make money if we can solve it, can you come up with something? We'll give you a couple of years. <laughs> so from, from a ticket that takes a day to an entire product that takes years to generate, uh, things have scaled up over time as I've become more experienced in the field. My name is Mike Shannon. I'm an Applications Engineering Manager at Siemens EDA Saskatoon. My role as a manager is a little bit different, obviously more high level, um, but somebody coming in as an AE, as an Applications Engineer, basically we have to figure out how to sell the product. We have to work with the customer to train them, but also figure out how we're going to grow the business. My name is Moise Ahmed and I'm an Applications Engineer here at Siemens EDA Saskatoon. So as an application engineer, I spend a lot of my time on calls with customers who are using our product and making sure that the tool is doing what it's supposed to with them and it's solving all their problems. And if they are encountering any challenges or, or, uh, or bugs, I, I'm able to unblock them and make sure that you know, they're able to do their work. Job of an AE is to grow the business, be a technical champion, and figure out how we're going to win. My name is Jeff Salisbury and I'm a member of the Customer Experience Team, or CX for short. We are part of the post-sales process, so after a company has bought licenses for one of the different EDA softwares, we essentially work in tandem with the applications engineers or the AEs in uh, helping to support the individual designers at those different accounts. We also help the AEs plan their on-site visits. We, we do primarily post-sales work in, in that sense. My name is Jennifer Detzel. I'm a software developer for the Solido Design Environment team, um, research and development uh, for Siemens. Basically, I'm a computer programmer, so I spend my day looking at a computer screen, writing code, reading it, finding bugs, but there's also a certain amount of my time that's in meetings, mentoring newer employees, going into design discussions for new features so that we can all sort of combine our brain power and come up with the best solution. So Siemens EDA is a, a branch of Siemens, the very large company across the world, but we're primarily located within uh, North America, especially this, uh, this outlet here in Saskatoon. EDA stands for Electronic Design Automation. We write software that electrical engineers use when they're designing microchips. We provide the software that they use in order to be able to automate those processes to make it simply easier and remove some of the human error from that entire design process. You'll see our software used by most of the top semiconductor manufacturers, including pretty much every chip that's in your cell phone. Siemens EDA as a whole is about providing differentiation and differentiated products. So really making uh, big waves in the industry with our technology and how do we make it 10x faster and like really disrupt the, the industry with, with our technology. So. Um, pushing that forward and coming up with really creative, smart ideas is what we're all about here in Saskatoon. Software development is entirely problem solving, absolutely. Um, in fact, software engineering is often a term that's used for it. It's a little bit cantankerous at the moment, but it definitely is, in my opinion, a form of engineering because you're constantly trying to solve problems, especially when it comes to, uh, at the end of the day, you're trying to build something for somebody else to solve a problem for them. So I don't just write software because it's cool. I write software because people have challenges that they're trying to solve. They come to us or maybe we see the problem and we come to them with the solution. 
solution already in mind, but we basically there's something they're trying to do and they're trying to find a way to make it easier, more efficient, more productive. And so they will describe to us the problem and we'll have to work with them to try and figure out what really is the problem, what kind of solutions could we provide, um, where is it working well, where isn't it working well, and constantly iterating on it to try and solve it. So every single step of every single day is problem solving in the small and in the large. The work we do is honestly helping the world progress if you look at it. So by empowering the uh, designers that we work with with better software, better tools to be able to do their work more efficiently, it's allowing them to be able to design better micro devices that are being used in really important equipment. We work with a, a customer that works on medical technology and some of the devices that they design end up going into advanced models of pacemakers. It really ultimately comes down to, yeah, allowing the world to progress with better technology to be able to help more people. I think there's two really important skills. The most obvious one is problem solving because that's what you do every day. So given a problem that you're trying to overcome, whether it's why doesn't this code work or uh, something more abstract like how do I make a how do I make a machine that can improve the yield for my crops, right? Maybe, maybe I want software that can somehow help with that. Um, you always start with some kind of a problem and you have to try and work your way through finding a solution to it. Having the passion to learn and keep, keep on learning new things, that's a, a good requirement for being an applications engineer. Because every day we're, we see new problems, we need to have a good problem solving sense of uh, skill to understand you know, what the problem is, why it's happening, how we can solve it, and then actually executing that. Problem solving is the thing you do every day constantly. It's by far the most important. Except that we're not just solving problems in a vacuum, we're solving problems for people. And communication is a really important part of that. Communication is, is just huge. And everyone will say that, and it's, it's just simply true. Making sure that you can write you know, an easily understood email is very, very critical. It's, it's really important to make sure that your communication is very concise and very clear. Being able to understand and empathize with what people are trying to accomplish and what you can do to help, working with other team members to share ideas and work through problems and other challenges. Um, it's not something that you can just do by yourself. It's inevitably going to be helping somebody else with something. And the more help you can give to them, the more help you can get from other people who you work with or in the field, the, the better you'll be able to serve them. So um, being able to communicate, being able to work through problems as a team is really what I do every day and the most important thing to learn. We wouldn't be able to provide the level of service that we do to the accounts and our customer base if we didn't focus very heavily on, on working as a, a team. The days where you could be just one person coding alone <laughs> whatever way you felt like with no people skills are kind of over now, but it's still a good job for an introvert. If you love uh, talking, this is a job for you. If you don't love talking, there's also other aspects of this job that you can do where you don't have to be customer facing all the time. You can be more behind the screen and then solving problems that way. So, I mean, obviously, if you have already tried it and you liked it, that's a great sign. Or if you like configuring your electronic devices to make them do exactly what you need to suit your needs, that's a great sign. Some of the signs that your brain may work the right way are if you really like logic puzzles, Programming feels like making things out of pure logic. So if you like making things and you like logic, that's a good sign you like computer science. So I think the jobs prospects coming up are really good. I know I've heard a lot about how AI is going to change everything, and undoubtedly it will, but we've been hearing for decades that something is going to make software development obsolete, and that just never happens. You always need somebody who knows how the machine works, who can tell it what you want it to do, even if it's writing an AI to do the rest of the work for you. We write tools all the time that make it easier for us to write programs so that we're not having to do the really low-level details like we used to 30, 40 years ago. This is a field that's been automated level upon level upon level and the demand for programmers has only increased. One thing that definitely continues to change is that we use computers more and more for everything and that's not going to stop. So there's always going to be a demand for software developers and Saskatchewan in particular seems to be a really good place for that right now. Uh, the University of Saskatchewan has really good programs, really good uh, uh, educators. The students who come out of there are really good. We hire new students here all the time and, and are quickly able to get them up to speed and, and working effectively. 
Um, and especially as other markets come and go, you know, as manufacturing maybe goes away, mining starts winding down and stuff like that, things are moving to knowledge-based economies and um, where you can do that anywhere. And Saskatchewan happens to be a really nice place for it because it's big and quiet and, and a really nice place to live. And so, yeah, you don't have to be in the middle of Silicon Valley. You can be here doing it instead and not have to pay for super high rent. <laughs> I think the thing to keep in mind is that there's no one set path. There's no right way to get where you want to go. And, and there might not even be a clear idea of where you want to go. And that's the same in programming as well. We're constantly trying to figure out what it is we even want to accomplish and how we're going to get there. And so at every step, we're always trying to learn as much as we can, um, come up with as many tools as we have available to us. And you make some kind of a plan of, I think I want to go here, and you make a step in that direction. But it's nothing you have to commit to. You don't have to plan everything out in advance and find the right answer and worry that you're going the wrong direction. Just try your best to pick somewhere to start going and start moving and, and always be uh, reviewing what you're doing, how it's working out, and be prepared to change your plans as you go. But nothing set in stone. Don't worry about making a mistake in your career planning or your education. Just try your best and, and adjust on the fly as needed. I love a whole lot of things about my work. I, the, the people, obviously. So we've built a really strong community, I guess, like really strong teams here. It's, it's like kind of in the hiring, but it just is the way that it, it works out, right? Like when, when you try to find the best people that really want to learn and help and push the technology forward and like just be awesome, uh, the, the, the community, the culture here just tends to be great. For me in my position as well as an AE, because we work directly with the customers, we get to travel. That's really awesome. Coming in every day, I'm, I'm not coming in like, oh, you know, okay, I gotta, I gotta wake up and I gotta take this call and oh, I'm dreading this and that. No, I'm, you know, I'm coming into work. I'm excited to see everyone. I say hi to everyone down the hall and uh, it is a great place to work. So I'm very fortunate. So the coolest thing for me as a software developer is I actually see it more like being a magician. Uh, you take this dead piece of electronics and by writing some magical incantations you bring the machine to life and it does your bidding. Uh, it is absolutely magical when it works. Uh, so I, I really enjoy that ability to just be able to come up with an idea whether it's something somebody wants solved or just like hey this would be cool I wonder if I can do this and uh, and being able to write some down some words work through some uh, issues and eventually get it to spring to life and do that right you've you've made something purely out of thought and uh, to be able to see that come to life is amazing and I get to do that every day find something that you think is really really awesome and fun to do and that's kind of what should guide uh, your trajectory, I think, in, in your career, because if you're doing something that you enjoy, like, it's easy. You, you get paid money to have fun.